Let's turn to Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. I'm going to read verses 24 to 28. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John, and began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. Actually, I'm going to stop right there. So, so there's a uh, somewhat famous, we talk about Apollos uh, many times, um, uh, and the point I wanted to highlight there was he was, a, um, he was instructed in the way of the Lord. He was fervent, so he was zealous, and he knew do- uh, Scripture, and he taught diligently. But he only knew one aspect of the gospel, right? It says knew only the baptism of John, which is the baptism of re- repentance. What he didn't understand was the other half was the, uh, was the redemptive power of Christ from sin to, to adopt us as children of God, right? So he didn't understand the second half, but yet somehow he was preaching and thank God for his uh, zeal, and his, but also his humility to be corrected by Aquila and Priscilla, who also and thank God for their boldness to encourage him. So, or to teach him the right way. So, so all these different aspects is what I want to talk about uh, because later in chapter 19, uh, we see how there were, when Paul was at Ephesus, he, say, he ran, ran into many uh, people who believed the same way. They believed in repentance or the baptism of John. They, didn't believe, they weren't baptized in the name of Jesus. They didn't believe the Holy Spirit. They said, they, they said, I haven't even heard there is such a thing called the Holy Spirit. Right? So they only knew the gospel halfway. So, um, and so, but when Paul came and taught them the full uh, gospel, they were ready to be, uh, they were ready to accept the complete truth of the gospel. So this uh, topic is what I want to cover today is, so if Justin two weeks ago, Talk to, uh, talk to us about uh, the, uh, the importance of learning the Word of God, right? He went through how the Old Testament, uh, the concealed Christ, and New Testament, uh, the revealed Christ, and, and how the importance of uh, learning the Word of God, understanding Scripture, he was point, pointing to the Bereans, how they believed uh, uh, in Paul, but they were made sure they, what, looked at the Scripture to know what Paul was saying is correct, right? So that same uh, attitude is what we also must uh, strive to have, right? We can't accept everything somebody tells us. Just because they say they're a Christian or a Christian preacher or they say they're preaching the gospel, we can't accept everything that we hear in the name of Christ. We have to know this for ourselves. Right? I sometimes say that we, we're almost like we're in the dark ages now. Yeah, back in the 1200s, right, in the Catholic Church was prevalent. Uh, you know, they depended on, the, the, the lay people depended on the priests to tell them, read the scripture, and nobody would read. And they didn't know what was in, in the Bible and until Martin Luther came and the Reformation happened, all these things. I feel like we've gone back to that age when we ourselves are not curious and not studying the scripture to know what is truth and what is not truth, right? So let us come back to that. But I wanted to, uh, so if you can put up the slides. So that's what I want to focus today is understanding counterfeit teaching, false teaching, right? And I can't cover everything, but I thought of a few that we can focus on that maybe many of those false teachings fit under these broad six uh, buckets. Right? But if 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it's on the slide, says, uh, warned us of this time, 
for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned to fables. So, Timothy, uh, Paul in his letter to Timothy, is warning us that in the end times, people who are Christians, they don't want true doctrine. They just want to satisfy their own lusts, so they will bring to themselves teachers that will tell them what they want to hear. Right? And they'll turn from the truth, and they'll turn uh, to fables or stories or counterfeit. What's a counterfeit? A counterfeit is something made to look like the real thing. Right? In most aspects, it might be very close, just like this uh, dollar note. It might be very close to the real thing, but it's not the real thing. It doesn't lead to the way of life. So this, this is something we have to be careful about, right? So I just wanted to highlight, because one thing we, before I go to the next slide, one thing we know is that this, these days, or the, the counter false teaching did not show up here in the last few years. Since the time of the apostles, since the time of the gospel, false teaching has prevailed, okay? And... Paul spent a lot of time warning and against false teaching. He spent a lot of time in the epistles talking about all the various types of false teaching. And many of those things are the same today. So that part hasn't changed, but maybe the focus of what the false teaching is has changed. So, so we just have to be students of the scripture. We have to study the scripture for ourselves so that nobody, whether it's our husband or our wife or our brother or sister or family, our own pastor, tells us something that is not in the Bible, we should question them. We shouldn't be afraid to question them, right? There's nothing wrong with questioning somebody who says something, right? Put it against the light of Scripture. If your parents are telling you something, go find it in the Bible and ask them, why are you saying this? It's not in the Bible. If your children are saying this, do the same thing. Right? We should be bold enough to question everything. Right? But to rely on the authority of the scripture and not our own feelings. Okay? The scripture, uh, we as Christians believe in the finality of the authority of scripture and that's what we should rely on. Okay, so first, um, if you go to the next slide. The first type of false teaching, so there's a broad bucket here, okay? Broad category. The so first type of uh, false teaching, for all these things fall into this first category. Ignoring the centrality of Christ and the gospel. Okay? This is so important. That's why I put it first. Uh, this is so important. Is that if we go away from Christ being the center of everything we do as Christians, we are in danger of believing a false gospel. If, if we're you know, studying the Old Testament, if you don't see Christ in it, you might mistake it to think it's about other things. If you, if you believe, if you listen to songs, and most of them are just a touchy-feely, feel-good things, then don't point to Christ and His redemptive work, you might be led to a false teaching. This is very important. Is Yes, it's you know, not every single message might directly mention Christ, right? But if there's a theme, if, if Christ is not glorified in the majority of our interactions with the scripture, it's false teaching. It doesn't matter who's saying it, okay? There, uh, I mean, our own churches, uh, I'm thankful for a pastor who sticks with the gospel in our church, but in our own Malayali churches, most of the time is spent on Old Testament teaching that doesn't point to the Christ that we believe in. That doesn't help people understand the gospel, the redemptive work of Christ. It's all about just the feelings and how, you know, things that we, you know, make our life here better. Which will bring to my next point in a minute. But this is so important. If you ignore the centrality of Christ, that Christ is, 
is the center of everything, of our whole belief system. And if there's somebody teaching this week after week and you're listening to them, you're giving your heart to them, I would say run fast. Run in the opposite direction. Okay? Don't give your attention to them. It doesn't matter who it is. If somebody is preaching something that is away from Christ being the focus, because if Christ is the focus, it will bring redemption. It will keep us on the straight path. It will keep us in the narrow way and keep our focus on it. You all with me? Hey, can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. All right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Next point. Next type of false teaching is no focus on eternity. Most of the teaching is, this is why I said about Old Testament, All, studying the Old Testament is so important, but don't study the Old Testament without understanding the gospel. Because you might think, oh, I'm going to be rich like Abraham. That might not be God's plan for you. Right? That's why uh, uh, Second Timothy, uh, uh, sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 6. Actually, I'm going to read that real quick. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, uh, verse, uh, verse 3 and 4 and 5. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, remember that's like point one, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, again, point number one, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth, meaning there's no truth in it. Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. This is what I said earlier. From such people, doesn't matter who it is, withdraw yourself from these people. If somebody teaches that gain is godliness, that means that you are holy because you accumulated wealth here. Success in this world is what is the basis of our belief in Christ. If somebody is teaching this, right? They are actually, the Malayalam translation says what? De, Deva Bhakti Adaya Sutravana. Wow, that's even clearer than English. That means you are following Christ as a tool to gain wealth. Paul is saying, run away from these people. Okay? If you study our Malayalam teaching, I'm sorry to say this, most of the preaching is based on this teaching. To make your life better in this world. I'm ashamed to say this, but we need to say it. Most of the teaching is about how to make our hope is in outcomes. We were talking about in the Sunday school. People are draw, uh, uh, destroying their faith because... All the preachers are talking about believing in outcomes. That, oh, if you pray hard, if you fast and pray, this outcome will happen. Rather than praying and trusting in the sovereignty of God. So when, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I believe that God will save me from this fire. But even if he doesn't, I'm not going to bow down before this God. That's what we should believe in. So if a preacher is preaching... All the things that he's talking about is how to make your life here better than focusing on our wealth in eternity. Run, run, run. Run away. No matter who it is. It doesn't matter who it is. It's not worth your eternity. Don't allow people to destroy your faith. Okay? You all with me? But because Deva Bhakti is not an Adaya Sutra. Okay? Uh, people twist wor words, you know, they might not say it explicitly. That's why I said about Malayali te teaching. You know, twist words here and there. And, but the summary is prosperity. Okay, I'm not preaching a poverty gospel. Again, that's also a false teaching. It doesn't mean that it's wrong to have wealth. But do you believe and trust in God's sovereignty in everything? Just like Paul said, I know how to be abound and I know how to be abound. A base. In all things, I put my trust in God. Amen? So that's the second false teaching. Go to the next one, please. 
All right, hyper works or hyper grace. Um, I put that, I mean, again, ignore the uh, catchy words, but uh, so two opposite sides of false teaching, okay? Hyper works is that it is the things you do that makes us, uh, 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 that makes us holy, right? So many of us carry on and we do all these things. We burn out and we feel like we have to do all these things and works and works and works. And we think that is what keeps us holy and perfect before God. And not only that, we judge other people because of the works we did. We think we're perfect. We're so special because we are doing all these works and we see somebody else not doing those things, and we fall into the trap of self-righteousness. We believe that it is our works that has given us the grace of God. That is completely false teaching, okay? It is completely false. We fall into that trap in our churches, right? We, we, um, it doesn't mean that works are not important. James says what? You show me your faith, and I'll show you my faith through my works. Faith without works is dead. I agree. But if you think you're, the things that you're doing are why you're holy or spiritual or anything like that, it's false. Yeah, I'll even go to, I mean, I, I mean there's a false doctrine that uh, crept into our, church, our own churches, and I, I hate to say this, but uh, jewelry. Okay? I'll say this jewelry because I'm not saying it's right or wrong to wear jewelry. But if somebody is teaching that you're not a Christian if you wear jewelry, and and it's outside of the redemptive work of Christ. That's a false teaching. We allowed that to destroy how we understand scripture and it corrupted our minds. We think that we do come to uh, every, uh, you know, uh, all these, uh, do all these things and we're special and uh, spiritual more than other people. That is false teaching. The other side is hyper grace. Oh, uh, this, this teaching says that... Um, Oh, you know, I was saved once, I took baptism, now it's grace. I can do what I want. I can sin, I can live how I want, I have no accountability. This is also false teaching because you don't understand, if you believe this, you don't understand how grace works, right? Uh, Romans 6 says what? Shall we continue in sin so that grace may abound? Should God forbid... Who you yield your members to obey, the servants of that, that's who you're the servant of. If you, yield your, uh, if you yield yourself to sin, you're a servant of sin, not of God. If you yield your, uh, yourself as servant of righteousness, you're a follower of righteousness. So neither hyper works or hyper grace is a true gospel. So if you see any of that, warn and, and rebuke and, and uh, remind of people of those things, right? And exhort. Again, when I say all these things, please make sure that we're doing everything in the meekness of Christ, right? That's what Paul says. If, some, if any man is in a fault, I beseech you that you approach him with the meekness, with the spirit of meekness. Again, not back in the works that I'm better than somebody else. Come to them in meekness and say, this is not scriptural. But we should be bold enough to say that. Right? Okay, next point. Misunderstand the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this is also another big category of buckets. So we completely misunderstand many times how that works. We put the Holy Spirit in this bucket of saying, okay, I need him to, when I want to speak in tongues, get all worked up and excited, but I don't want him controlling anything. That's not what the Holy Spirit is there for. Okay? Paul said even if, you know, when you come together, even if you don't speak in tongues, let each other exhort each other in prophecies and interpretations, right? Or, you know, we, we you know, or the other, we go the other extreme and say, I don't believe any of this. I don't want any of the gifts of the Spirit. But Paul, and the scripture says, desire earnestly the best gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, there is no gospel, there is no Christianity without the Holy Spirit. That's black and white. 
There's no in between. Okay, so if some preacher is, you're listening to is saying, you know, there's no gifts of the Holy Spirit, it is stopped, I would say run away. There might be people who don't understand it, who don't fully realize it. That's totally fine. We're also trying to understand. But if somebody is preaching against the works of the Holy Spirit, I would say keep away from them. But if you also use your you know, gifts of the Holy Spirit to show yourself as better than somebody else, that's also false. We must understand the Holy Spirit and how we, uh, how we uh, uh, lead our churches. Right? We, we show... Um, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we set our churches up to be controlled by the people, right, and not scripturally. So we, uh, we, we want church to go a certain way, and we want to control the outcome, and so we ignore how God has set up the church, and we misunderstand the, whole, the role of the Holy Spirit in the church. I can say the same thing for the family, in your work, all these things. The Holy Spirit is given to us, to fulfill the law of Christ, to live out the gospel. Without the Holy Spirit, it's impossible to have the ability to fulfill the law of Christ. So let us read the scriptures for ourselves. There is a lot of uh, teaching um, that talks about, oh, you know, all these weird manifestations, that's from the Holy Spirit. You know, as long as it's, you know, in the name of God, you know, it's all based on feelings and experiences. But it's not in scripture. I would say run away from those two. Right? Everything that we believe in has to be based on the gospel. And in the scripture that is given to us. Okay, next. My time's uh, running out. The next one is celebrity worship. This is a big deal right now. So, when I say about this, is we put our trust in these people that is so prominent. And so we put our hopes... And faith in what certain people are saying. And, I, and, and we get offended when somebody says something against it. Whether it's singers or preachers. Again, it's not just an English preacher, a Malayali preacher, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right? We put our trust in people and prominent people rather than scripture. So whatever they say is acceptable because we put our trust in that person. This is false teaching. No man is exalted above the scripture. In fact, God says in the Psalms, I put my word above my name. So somebody says the name of Christ, and he does not measure up to the word, he is lacking. I put my word above my name. So there is no such thing as celebrity preachers in the, according to scripture, or singers, or bands, or whatever, it doesn't matter. Do not worship people. I will say the same about churches. You know, there's celebrity churches too, just like Hebron, right? We pride ourselves on being the biggest and the best. This is false. We're not special. We are come together as a body of Christ. There are other people that gather together as, as, as a body of Christ. Let us avoid things that exalt ourselves versus the gospel of Christ. Let us not pride ourselves in fake things, right? And return to the gospel of Christ. Since my time is done, I'll go to the next one. Mingling worldly principles with biblical doctrines. It's the last one. Again, there's many that I've missed, but just broad categories. So many of the things we believe in and put our hope in are worldly teaching, worldly philosophy. As Minu talked about, you know, uh, in Mars Hills, people are gathered together you know, the Stoics and the Epicureans and all these, you know, there's worldly philosophies and, you know, they sometimes look like the gospel and they sometimes feel like it's the right thing, but Christ is not glorified. The end of that teaching is not the glorification of Christ. So it's false teaching. Whether it's about self-help or whether it's about, uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter what it is. You know, I don't want to go into all of those things in my time is run out because I spend a lot of time on all of these, right? But remember, just because something seems good, if it, you have to measure it in the light of the gospel. That's the whole point of my message today is light of the gospel has to reveal the truth of everything that we bring into our lives, whether it's people or teachings or churches or whatever. 
has to be measured against the light of the gospel. Don't put your trust in man, for vain is the trust in man. But trust in God and allow that to... Uh, uh, worship team, please come forward. <clears throat> allow him to open up scriptures for us. So Psalm 119 says what? Open my eyes so I may see the wonders of your law. Understand script, you have to have a curiosity and a desire to know scripture for yourself. How can we be a Christian if we don't desire? And even that comes from God. Our desires come from God. So ask God to help us want to learn scripture. Right? And finally, I mean, how do we, you know, like, so there's so many, how do we, you know, how does this happen, right? Um, I believe in 2 Timothy chapter 3, it talks about, you know, it talks about false teaching, and it, this is an interesting phrase there, it says, forever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 7. Ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We're all seeking... Every, you know, we spend so much time going from message to message to message to message and, you know, and reading things and books. <clears throat> I mean, those are all, I'm not against those things. But just, just put that out for us for a little while. Trust in the Word. See, God's design for the church is a local church community, right? When we want more than what our local church community that you are under the discipleship of, or wherever, I'm not talking about Hebron, whatever community you're a part of, and if you're not allowing God to work in your life through the teachings of that community you're a part of, and you just want to look for something better, it doesn't work. You're never going to be satisfied. If you look for truth in the trash, if you look for truth amongst all these things, just one preacher after the other, and you just feel like you just don't know anything in the end, come back to the scripture. And go, allow God to open your eyes to see the beauty of his scripture and his gospel. May his name be glorified.